Okay, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about why we need to learn about implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation has a lot of details with it, and we'll look at some of those in the next video. But in this video, we're just going to talk about the kinds of problems where you would need implicit differentiation, what it's used for. Okay, so we have three problems here, and the instructions say find dy dx. So we want to differentiate y with respect to x. This first one is an easy problem at this point. We know how to do that. Uh, we've got y equals x squared plus 4 sine x, so we just differentiate that one. So we're going to just go ahead and do that uh, just as an easy little refresher of some derivative rules. So I have a sum of two functions here. So we have a rule about finding a derivative of a sum of functions. We just do that term by term. So derivative of x squared is 2x, and then the 4 will come along, and then the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. All right, so that's a pretty easy derivative problem. I don't need implicit differentiation for anything like that. We already know how to do that. This next problem, uh, one of the things that you might notice is that unlike the first example, the second example is not solved for y. And so finding dy dx, I need to think a little bit about how the x's and y's are related here. But this one's actually pretty easy to solve for y. So if I were doing a problem like this and I need to find dy dx, I might do a little algebra first. But then after I did the algebra, it would just be finding derivatives. So we'll go ahead and do that one as well. This is not one you really need implicit differentiation for. Um, all right, so I'm going to solve for y. I'm going to subtract the 3x squared from both sides. And so I'll have 4y equals negative 3x squared plus sine of x. And then divide through by 4 or maybe multiply through by 1 fourth. Remember to do that for all the terms here. So I would have y equals, maybe I'll write this as negative 3 fourths x squared plus 1 fourth sine of x. And so that point, I've just done algebra to solve for y. But now I want to find dy dx, but now this problem is not much different than the previous problem. I have some different coefficients to deal with, but pretty much it's similar to the previous problem. So I can find dy dx equals, I'm just going to bring down the exponent and subtract one. So I'll have negative 6 fourths, which reduces to negative 3 halves, x plus the 1 fourth will come along, and the derivative of sine is cosine. Okay, so there's the derivative with that. We had to do a little algebra first, but then it's a matter of just applying the basic derivative rules. If we look at this last example, you might notice that there are a couple of different y's in here. And one of them inside the quadratic function, 3y squared, and then another one inside this trig function, sine of y. So if I try to do the same process on this last one, I actually can't do the algebra to solve completely for y in order to find that derivative. I have the y inside an algebraic function and also inside a transcendental function. So it's not just that you don't know enough algebra, it's that there is not algebra that allows you to solve completely for y in a problem like this. But if I still want dy dx, then this is exactly the kind of problem where we need to learn a little bit more. And so we're going to look at that in the next video, what we want to know more about how to do that is called implicit differentiation. So we'll look at some problems like this in the next video.